Welcome to my lecture online. In the previous video, we determined the equation that can find the angle required to fire a projectile at a particular velocity in order for it to reach a particular range. In this example, the range is 40 meters and the initial velocity of the projectile is 20 meters. Now remember that this equation only works because the height of the projectile at its start when it's fired is equal to the height of the projectile where it lands. When the two heights are the same, the equation became as follows. The sine of 2 theta was equal to gx divided by v sub naught squared, where g is equal to a positive 9.8 meters per second squared. Now normally, of course, in, a, in projectile motion, g is a negative 9.8 meters per second squared, and that's indeed the case. But in order to find this equation, we had to already allow for the negative sign in the equation, and that's what we end up with. Which means that 2 theta is going to be equal to the arc sine of gx over v initial squared, which means that theta is therefore equal to 1 half the arc sine of gx over v initial squared. Now we have the equation, let's plug in what we have and see how we find the answer. So the angle theta is equal to one half times the arc sine, and in our case, g of course is still 9.8, x is going to be the range, which is 40 meters, divided by v initial, 20, and of course we have to square that. All right, now with a calculator, let's find out what that's equal to. We get 9.8 times 40 divided by 20 squared, which is 400, and we get 0 0.98. So theta is equal to 1 half times the arc sine of 0 0.98. Now here's a key thing. We can only take the arc sine of a number between 0 and 1. If for some reason this fraction ends up being greater than 1, then you know there's no such angle that can solve the problem. But in other words, you cannot reach that range with the initial velocity, irregardless of what the angle is. For no angle will you be able to reach that particular distance. For example, let's say that the range was 50 meters. So we'll just do a little example. What if the angle here, instead of 40, was going to be 50 meters? And we plug 50 in there instead of 40. So if this becomes 50 instead of 40, let's see what we end up with. So we end up with 9.8 times 50 divided by 400 equals, and we end up with a number greater than 1. It would be 1.225, and you cannot take the arc sine of that, which means there is no answer in that particular case. So that's always something really good to keep in mind. Of course, in this case, we're not going to take the range of 50 because we want to see what answer looks like. So now what we're going to do is take the arc sine of 0.98, so the inverse sine, means that theta is equal to 1 half times, inverse sine of that is 78.52 degrees, and therefore theta is equal to half of that, which is 39.26 degrees. And that is the angle required for that projectile in order to reach a distance of 40 meters. Now when you think about it, it makes a lot of sense because we've already learned in previous videos that the, the farthest the projectile can go is when it has an angle of 45 degrees. Notice that 40 meters is close to its ultimate distance a projectile can reach when it starts at 20 meters per second. That's why this number was so close to one. It knows the angle is 39.26 degrees, which isn't that far away from 45 degrees. And if it was 50 meters, even at 45 degrees, you wouldn't be able to reach that distance. And so that's how we find the angle required for a projectile to reach a particular distance given an initial velocity. Only, of course, in this case, where the height of the start of the projectile and the end of the projectile is the same height. Now, in the next video, we're going to show you how to derive the equation when the heights are not the same. And yes, that is a little bit more difficult.